Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and today I'll show you how to make your own hardwood edge banding with a common router bit. Hardwood veneered plywood is a great option for large furniture panels because it's far more stable than solid wood, but the edges look terrible. The common solution is to attach adhesive backed edge banding, and that works fine, but over time it can delaminate or the thin veneer can chip away. Sometimes it's better to make your own hardwood edge banding because it's much more durable. You can buy special router bit sets for this purpose, but today I'm going to show you how to use a common V-groove bit to get the same thing done. So let's get started. I'm going to use a regular V-groove bit. These are fairly inexpensive if you get the smaller ones. This one is three quarters of an inch wide, which is just as wide as my workpiece. The problem is that leaves almost no room for error. If I had an inch wide one, that would still be relatively inexpensive and it would give me a little extra width compared to my workpiece. So that would be better. They make them up to an inch and a half wide. Those are about 65 bucks. I'm going to try to do it with a three quarter inch wide bit. To do that, I have to mark exactly the center of my workpiece. And I was very precise when I marked that. So now I'm going to lower the bit and I'm going to move my fence so that it would be centered. The bit's point will be centered right on the line. Now I'll lower the bit almost all the way below the table. I just want to catch the point and I'll make a pass and then I'll slowly start raising the bit, continuing to make passes until I complete my V. I haven't gone all the way up, but I can already see that my point is not hitting my line. So I can correct this still. Once the ends of the V reach the corners of the workpiece, it's too late to correct. But I can correct this now by nudging the fence slightly. So I'm going to do that and then I'll continue to cut deeper. Towards the end, I want to raise my bit very slowly because I don't want to overcut. If I do, then I won't have any of these edges resting on the table to support the cut and that can be iffy. So you really just want to hit that so you get a nice sharp edge on each side. Now that I've gone through all this trouble, I've centered the bit and I've raised it to the right height. Now I could run all the edges of all the parts in my entire project without touching that bit. So this fuss only has to take place the first time you cut the first edge. Now we'll set up to cut the edge banding. Now I've lowered the bit so that this shoulder is level with the table. So it's going to be cutting at its full angled height. Then I'm going to move the fence to conceal most of it. I want only about 3 16 of an inch showing. Now I'm going to run the workpiece on both faces and after each pass I'll move the fence exposing a little more of the bit which will gradually sharpen that edge until the points meet in the center. I like to end up with just a slight flat on the edge. Gives me a little bit of room for the glue. At the table saw, I trimmed off the edge, at least close, and now I gotta glue it. The end grain layers of this plywood will really soak up some of the glue, so I wanna make sure that there's enough in there. I need some type of face frame clamp to hold this down. These bandy clamps from Rockler work really well for this. After the glue dries, you can trim the banding closer to the plywood edge at the table saw, and nobody will know you aren't using a solid wood panel. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, be sure to check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal over at StumpyNubs.com. Happy edge banding.